Hey, this is Elan. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the Holistic Health Podcast. And today I'm joined by the amazing Katie Corbett. And Katie is a business manager and owner of a VA agency based in Tipperary. Her background is in inventory and operations management in the medical device industry. She set up her business in 2021 during the lockdown in Sydney and brought it home with her last year after spending nine years abroad. Uh, Katie loves running and recently completed her second half marathon. She also enjoys swimming and does a sauna session on a weekly basis. She has a strong interest in holistic health, as well as human design and constellations. Uh, Katie tries to attend a mindfulness class or engage in some form of self-care work each week. Um, interestingly, Katie was never into running before, but she picked it up and started to enjoy it more and more. She finds it very beneficial for her mind, especially considering her experience with endometriosis and PCOS, as well as her fertility journey over the past two to three years. And in her free time, uh, Katie loves reading and currently has two books on the go. And she also enjoys camping and exploring new countries and cities. Katie, uh, very welcome today. How are you? I'm good, Alan. Thank you for having me. Uh, no, I was delighted to have you because, um, you know, we've been working together now for is it just over two years yeah yeah mad crazy <laughs> yeah it's pretty amazing and uh katie uh as i kind of mentioned there you know she runs a, a va agency and va is short for virtual assistant but katie has essentially been the one that's kept me on track over the last couple of years and she's been my social media manager and you know personal assistant and just making it so much easier for me to stay on top of things um so yeah no like it's it's been amazing the last couple of years to have your support and i'm sure there's a lot of other you know business owners who are currently you know getting that amazing support yeah yeah it's definitely taken off in the right direction um and i think even in the last 12 months more so than the previous 12 months. Like you were very progressive with your business that you were willing to outsource. Whereas um, I, I find now in the industry, it's only kind of taken off properly or people are trusting it more. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the last two years have flown by. I can't, I actually can't believe that it's been two years since we started working together. Yeah, no, it's really cool. And, you know, it's just like streamlined so many things for me because it's like, uh for especially for me as being a coach I, i'm there to support mm -hmm. other people so like the amount of time that i invest like working with clients and you know doing one-to-one -one sessions and classes and all that kind of stuff then when it comes to doing the back-end operations it's like i got to a point where i just like didn't have the the time or the energy to do it so having your support has you know made such a massive difference Great. Yeah, it happens as all. Well. I mean, we hit that mark in the evening where it's time to work on our business instead of in the business. And it, it can be really hard. Like now mm -hmm. I outsource as well. So it just has that domino effect because you yeah. do hit that stage where you don't want to hit burnout anymore. Um, or you're just, yeah, you don't have the brain capacity to take on another task. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, I'm really interested to find out like what was the thing that you know really pushed you to set up the agency and you know become self-employed um it's a great question um so I first had the niggling thought in I'd say it was 2018 and I remember being on our honeymoon and I said to David that I I wanted to set up my own business and he <laughs> the look of terror on his face because he was just like We've literally just had to pay for a wedding. We're in the middle of buying a house. We're on honeymoon. Like you can't rock the boat too much. But I was adamant. I was adamant that I was setting up my own business. Um, but it, like anything, took a long time for me to gain the confidence to actually go out and do it. And I was working in a role that was very demanding, very fast paced, long hours, um, huge demand and from me on a personal aspect and it was just eating away at me I was completely burnt out I was living away from home we were mid lockdown out of lockdown back into lockdown so it was just crazy and I just couldn't take it anymore and I just said I am setting up my own business 
I'm handing in my notice and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I'll just apply for a new job because I can't continue with the way that I'm going. Um, and that was September 2021. And by November, I had clients and I left my job. Um, I came home to Ireland for the Christmas and I spent about six or seven weeks here. And then by March, I had more clients. It was just taken off, taken off. And then I actually hit like a plateau stage where nothing kind of happened for me. And I put all of my energy into moving back from Sydney to Ireland and uprooting a life of nine years over there to come home. Um, and by August 2022, I didn't know if I'd made the right decision. I was applying for medical device jobs. Um, I couldn't see any kind of growth. Um, I couldn't see any foresight for the business. I had no vision. I, I couldn't see any way of moving it forward or moving or scaling it, to be honest. And I remember nearly quitting on the 4th of August and saying, I am done. I am not putting myself through this anymore. And the next day, two people phoned me to help them with the business. And I was just like, OK, that's a sign to keep going. And yeah, the rest is kind of history. I just kept going and kept growing it. And here I am. Nice. And um, how many people have you got in the agency now? Um, so I've 12 contractors that work for the business. Um, and my husband, David, runs the other side of the business. So he deals with um, Australian clients. So he works odd hours and I get the nice hours. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's crazy. It's kind of hard to believe. I don't talk about it much because it kind of scares me, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really fun. Wow, that's unreal. So you're like a power couple now, essentially. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think I'd be able to work with him, but it's, yeah, we can work alongside Nice, good stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think like that's a really interesting thing you said about the plateau because um, I read a few years ago uh, when it came to like personal trainers or people who set up businesses in health and fitness, something like 90% of people who start a business in health and fitness will usually either quit or fail after I think it was like two years, something like that. And that's probably the, um, the not so glamorous side that, that most people don't see because the majority of people just see the highlight reel of like Instagram of, you know, oh, here's all the things that are going well, but then they don't see the plateaus or like yeah. that like moment that you got to last August where you're like, yeah. what what do I do? Like, do I go this way or, or do I go that way? You know? So. Yeah, exactly. Like there's definitely late nights, early mornings, there's some months where clients decide that they don't want to continue with their contract and there could be one client that just decides it and that's a hit income wise. It's a hit confident why, confidence wise because you're not sure if you did something wrong or what is it that they don't want to continue with. Um, so yeah, there's, there's lots that people don't see um, and Instagram or any kind of social media platform can be dangerous that way because it's just a highlight reel really it's not showcasing me here at half 11 at night worrying about trying to get some kind of marketing strategy working or an, an inventory list out by six the next morning yeah no for sure and like you said earlier there's like working in the business and there's working on your business so yeah. you know you could be working in your business like I could be working with my clients or you'd be working with your clients from whatever like eight to six or eight to seven but then the other hours of 6 a.m to 8 a.m or 8 p.m to 11 p.m they could be yeah. hours like where you're actually working on it yeah so exactly yeah it's, like a, it's a 24 7 thing like having your own business for sure yeah and it's often said to me why are you getting so emotionally invested in it or why are you letting it affect you that way because I get heavily invested into all of the clients that I work with, all of their businesses. And if something doesn't go well or something doesn't um, sit right or present well or they're not happy, it it affects me because it's like, OK, what what did I do wrong? 
where can we improve? What can we do better next time? Um, and it's hard not to get emotionally invested in things. And that's also draining because your brain is constantly thinking of better ways to do things. Um, like I'm already thinking of next June, July, August, if I want to take time off, which I haven't properly done since I set up the business. If I wanted to properly take a holiday where I don't bring my laptop with me, what happens in that week? And I'm already thinking of that. And it's the 7th of November. So your brain is constantly in this overdrive um, where it's very hard to switch off. It's definitely 24 seven. Yeah. And, and that's one of the main reasons why I have your support, because like when I went to Athens and Crete, I knew that you were still working away in the background, doing mm. a lot of things and same with any holiday I've been on. So mm. Yeah, it's um it's really tough. So when like when you're planning to go on holidays, like what are you thinking of doing? Are you gonna have some of the other people in the agency keep things going for you? Or like how Yeah, yeah, I suppose that? that's the plan, but it would be a case of making sure that it's the right person matched with the right client and that it's um all in harmony because there's no point in me saying this is what needs to be done, but the people not aligning. Um because that's very important as well. So that, that relationship factor needs to be there too. That like, for example, your business, if I was to match um, like Eva or Michelle with you and then say, just go and this is what Alan expects. But then, you know, you you might not hit it off or you, your personalities might clash or they might have a different perspective on something than you would. So I think that's where my brain goes at night where I'm thinking who is the right fit for the right person. It's like matchmaking. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure and I'm interested to find out like um what kind of industries are you working with people in because obviously I'm in like you know holistic health and fitness and mindset and all that yeah. kind of stuff. but um, other people outside of that oh yeah like it's a broad scope and um, which I think has set me apart from a lot of other people that are in the industry because I never niched down to a particular um, business owner or avatar I just said if it's somebody that's busy that wants more time for themselves on a personal level then that's who I work with so I'm I work with um, executive coaches uh, I work with um, uh, like product-based businesses so like telecommunications um, shop installs like there's there's loads, there's lots. And then there are some holistic health in there um, in terms of like yoga, meditation teachers um, and yeah, the cosmetic industry as well. So yeah, there's a broad, a broad scope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. And um, before you decided to set up the business, like um, what was it like, obviously you don't have to name who you're working for, but was it like a big, like a multinational or something like that? Mm -hmm. or yeah, so they were uh, the equivalent of Johnson & Johnson or Stryker. Um, so they were up there, very much up there. Um, and yeah, it just was not a nice environment in the end. Um, and I've never, I've, I, I've never spoken about it properly. Um, and I've not spoken to anybody since I left the business in 2021. So I think it's just a chapter that I closed, but it was a, a business that I worked for for over eight years um, and worked my way up from customer service to inventory control to inventory management and then operations management. So it was uh, um, a huge growth and a huge experience for me and has definitely stood to me. I've learned a lot. I know who I want to work with and who I don't want to work with. So um, it's definitely taught me a lot. Yeah, I, that's probably like one of the the best lessons we can learn along the way. It's it's mm -hmm. more important to know who you don't want to work with because that ends up saving you so much time, energy. And, energy. Yeah. and I think most importantly though, just your energy because mm -hmm. it's so horrible. Like when you're you're working with someone or you're on a call with someone, and you leave the call feeling worse than when you started. Yeah, and like for me, that's always like a good indicator that I shouldn't work with someone if I leave the call feeling worse. Mm. Um, 100%. Yeah. 
And I always said, like, I any time that I woke up on a Sunday morning in Sydney, the dread that went through my whole body about the Monday morning was horrific. Like so much so that I would go mute. I would not speak. I would be in no mood for anything on a Sunday. And that's no way to live your life, especially when you're living in a city such as Sydney, where it's buzzing and you're in your 20s and you, you've the world literally at your doorstep. And I just was not in the mood to do anything. So that was a huge lesson for me, was that that, that, I, that feeling will never, ever move through my body ever again um so i make sure of that every week and i touch base with all of my clients to make sure that like what i'm doing is correct that it still aligns with what their expectations are um and if it doesn't then i need to reassess because what is it that again could be improved on and if it's not something that's within my scope then maybe it's time to part ways and that's how i operate Mm -hmm. yeah i i think the the stress that comes along with being self-employed is much better than the dread feeling you get from mm -hmm. being working for someone else that you don't like working for or with you know yeah yeah exactly it doesn't even you can't even compare the two because i and i even read it again this morning if you're doing something that you enjoy to do and it doesn't even end up feeling like work at the end of the day because that stress is a good stress. It means that you're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. You're hitting that terror barrier, but you're pushing through it. You're you're growing, you're scaling, you're doing something that excites you, but it's not the dread or that fear, that Sunday fear that you get um, in case you feel the wrath of somebody else because it's their business, you know? So it's, yeah. it's definitely something that you can't compare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never worked for a multinational or anything like that, but like the vast majority of women that I work with, you know, have are currently working in or have worked in like LinkedIn or Facebook or um oh what are some other ones? Uh like maybe Hewlett Packard or mm -hmm. you know, any like big multinationals, like a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them tend to have a kind of a toxic work environment where it's like especially like in like microsoft or linkedin or places like that where it's like okay come into the office and like you don't need to leave now because we have a gym here we have all your food here yeah. like you don't need to leave and it's like the amount of people that i see that are you know on the verge of burnout or getting burnt out because you know they're working whatever 10 or 12 hour days and mm -hmm. deadlines constantly and it's like stress is like probably one of the biggest killers out of anything I and mean, when you're constantly in that high pressure environment it's like it just doesn't feel good to be there 100 percent, i couldn't agree more and it doesn't even necessarily have to be the big like mncs it can be small businesses as well where that toxic environment can manifest because they're not willing to change or they're not open to new people coming in that aren't family or haven't been there since day one and it's like that that toxic positivity kind of thing of um, here's the gym, here's your membership. We will give you everything that you need, but you can't leave. <laughs> you have to work. And then you're kind of trapped. You're in that zone of, well, I'll just check my emails. And then it ends up being an hour that you've spent on the laptop. Um, and it's not, you know, that's an hour that you could have spent with your children or on the couch watching your favorite TV show or out for a walk. Like there's so many different ways of that burnout can manifest and it doesn't necessarily have to be those huge companies but it can also be the small ones as well yeah I think that the, they're like some toxic traits that are kind of like maybe more not as recognized like little things I've been like where people your maybe your boss expects you to be checking your emails at the weekend or you know instead of just having a set time of like okay you work from nine to six like some people expect you to still be online or be around after or before those hours are even going yeah. ways and like there's there's been a good few people even recently who said to me like you know they went on holidays and they had to really just put their foot down with their boss and be like look I'm going on holidays I'm not going to answer your emails and 
I'll deal with it when I come back, you know, it's like, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it's so difficult when you're in that kind of environment where if your manager or if the, the CEO or the boss or whatever has that kind of like hustle culture, you know, yeah. it, like it's not, it's not like good for you in the long term. That's for sure. hundred percent. I'm a massive believer that businesses only operate at the same energy that filters down from the top. So my biggest thing was when I was setting up the business was that it was going to be something where people would enjoy working and it's a healthy environment, not healthy as in what everybody else spits out like this healthy work-life balance, but then don't actually live it. This is, if you don't have time to, to answer my message, that's fair enough. That's a hundred percent. As long as I'm acknowledged at some point, whether it's between nine, five tomorrow or nine to five on Wednesday, as long as I'm acknowledged in a respectful way, that's fine by me. Mm -hmm. If you can't do something, just say it and I'll figure out another way. Don't bend over backwards. Don't put yourself under immense stress because I've asked for something and you have to drop so many things to try and get something done for me. And that's how I operate the business. But I, it's yet to hit mainstream. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think that's, it's going to be a long time coming for sure. Yeah. Uh, like the way that I always structure my days and if if anyone is kind of having trouble with stuff like that, you know, the simplest thing is like, like what's your, your time on and then what should be your time off? So if you're working from whatever nine to five, then all your other time is literally your time off. And obviously you can schedule other things in there like, you know, your self-care time or workouts mm -hmm. or walks or spending time with your kids or partner or you know whatever it is absolutely yeah I was at a good um networking event about a year and a half ago and the lady that was running it was like I have color-coded my calendar and my calendar is majority yellow and I took from that exactly what it was that she was doing I brought the template home and I've set my calendar up that it's blocked so anything that's yellow is my time and I don't care who it is. They do not get to book anything that's yellow because that's my time. And that's how I time block. I have my morning routine. I have my AM work block. Then I have my PM work block. And then I have my time. And it's majority yellow when you look at the screen with, you know, the blocks of work. So it's definitely important to schedule that time on, time off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so much more efficient to do it that way because... Yeah. I, I like made the mistake in the past of thinking like, oh, I should just make myself available all the time. Yeah. But then I ended up just getting burnt out doing like literally being like, oh yeah, I'm available from 6.30 a.m. till 9 p.m. Yeah. <laughs> and then after a while I was like, okay, I actually need to take weekends off. So then I blocked off the weekends. And then when I worked with a different business coach, she was like, you should have a whole day that's just a sprint day where it's like mm -hmm. you're purely focusing on working you know, on the business or working on different things that you, you need to do, or maybe don't have time for, you know, in the rest of the week. Yeah. And like things work so much better now because I have the time blocked off on a Tuesday, you know, for a good few hours. And then I have specific times for the classes for, you know, everyone that we work with. And even though I have more time blocked off now, I actually get more done because it's like, yeah you get more done when you're just focused for a certain amount of time versus trying to do like everything all the time. 100%. And it's the same as um, I was watching a good hack about cleaning yesterday. And it was like, set your timer and you have two minutes to clean a particular area. And I'm a very competitive person. So I will try and beat that timer. So it actually does work. You are way more effective. You clean better because you're trying to beat something. And it's the same as that time block when you know you only have two hours to complete something you'll get it done because you only have those two hours um so yeah i think that time blocking or that time method of of timing yourself is, is really really beneficial yeah it might seem like a bit over the top or ocd but it's yeah. honestly like the most efficient way to do things because yeah absolutely i actually do the same thing i hate like washing up and stuff so the uh, like like literally the other day i just put my phone i was like okay okay 10 minute timer I'm just gonna like do as much as I can and I got whatever like 
a third of the dishes done I was like okay I'll just like I'll do the rest of them later yeah but, you know just breaking it into like manageable chunks like that helps. yeah exactly yeah it's definitely because that's how people get overwhelmed when you look at something as a whole instead of taking it section by section or yeah. what is it that this particular part could <laughs> um do or be improved on how can I improve on this particular part and then that will just have that domino effect like anything else mm -hmm. yeah for sure and um yeah I really want to uh chat about the running as well because you mentioned yeah. at the start like how running wasn't really something that you used to like no but now you've done mm -hmm. two half marathons yeah yeah it's mad um I never ever thought that Katie would ever say that she ran a half marathon let alone two um yeah it was like a, oh when I think of I, I remember my first ever run it was down one of the streets in Limerick when I was going to college down there and I was so conscious about who would see me um what would people think um am I wearing the right thing do I even look like I I run you know do I have a silly run? Like this was all going through my head. And I think I lasted about 15, 16 minutes. And I just went inside and I did not run again for seven years. That was it. I was nearly traumatized. I hate gyms. I just had such a massive lack of confidence in my body, in myself. And I just could not find something that I aligned with or liked. And it was late 2017 I think it was when I said okay I'm just going to go for a run and just see what happens and we were living beside this beautiful park and I could barely run the loop of it and it was about three kilometers in total the loop and I kept stopping and starting and I was like I have to be able to run this without stopping and that was my drive and then I hit the 3k mark and then I was OK, I'm going to join Park Run and see what happens on a Saturday morning. Again, stopped and walked a bit, but managed after a few weeks to complete the 5K without stopping. And did a 14K race in Sydney. And then I was like, OK, 2019 is my year. I am doing a half marathon and nobody's going to say otherwise. And I trained from I think it was the October or the November right through until the May and I did it I could not believe that I had done a half marathon um and it just like the grow that that I got for it and grew for it was just immense like the way it helped my brain um especially when I was in such a demanding work environment going out in the evening um or early morning for that run was pivotal like it was huge for me because I got to clear my head if I was angry I'd just run faster or I'd throw on heavier music like whatever it was that had pissed me off throughout the day had just completely gone and I was a nicer person to live with I won't lie like I'd say David was just like you are magic <laughs> you you are not being as hard on me or anything like it was just it just had such an effect on everything my personality my body um like yeah, my mental health, it was just huge. And yeah, it was just, it was my outlet. It was really, really important to me. Um, and then it kind of just fizzled out for a while, um, especially struggling like fertility wise, that it don't run too much, don't have too much cardio in your in your lifestyle. And I, yeah, I just didn't really do it for about a year and a half um and then earlier this year I was like f that I'm going back I enjoy it and I completed another half marathon in May so it was yeah it was really really it's a, a I suppose a, a unique journey I'm not a runner like elite but I enjoy it yeah that's amazing and it just shows you as well like you know if you have a plan and you know you want to achieve something like it's literally just a case of continuing and being really persistent mm. like you can do way more than you thought you ever could do 100 percent, yeah 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 definitely like for somebody who couldn't even run a kilometer to then run over 21 consecutively like it's just huge 
yeah and that like bad experience that you had so that was like in 2010 was it uh yeah maybe 2009 2010 yeah yeah um yeah when you were saying that about how you felt like embarrassed and you know Mm -hmm. um, things like that it just reminds me of um the spotlight effects uh you you might have read it when I because obviously you you post my my (laughs) newsletters on on LinkedIn so (laughs) you might have a quick scan of them sometimes but there's like this uh phenomenon in psychology called the spotlight effect and it's like so can you remember the last time somebody else was out running and they felt embarrassed god no i mean and i i I remember the article i remember reading it and i was like that is absolutely brilliant um because you don't remember other people being embarrassed or doing something embarrassing but you would eat yourself up or beat yourself up about something that you did, as you say, in 2014, that lasted like for a second, and you'll go, oh "My God, I can't believe I said that, or that yeah. I did that." Like it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like it's a it's a good way to kind of like I think work around any of the embarrassment that that we might feel because if we can't remember, like somebody else, even yesterday, who was running down the street and 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 think mm-hmm. that they felt embarrassed, then then no like there's literally nobody else that can remember us doing something when we felt that yeah. way you know? yeah so. I highly doubt there's anybody driving around Limerick going do you remember that girl that was running <laughs> <laughs> down South Circular Road in 2009 like yeah. no, we're talking about 14 years ago like it's crazy <laughs> yeah but it's amazing how that one experience that we might have had it gets lodged in our brain and then we constantly replay that you know whatever minute or two when we felt that way and and then you know you're you're kind of like um because you're so motivated like you work through that which is amazing and now you've done half marathons but there's some people who that would just stick with them their entire life and it would completely stop them then yeah yeah but now it does affect me like I was in Limerick yesterday and I drove down that street and it was the first memory that came into my head not oh I used to live on this street I wonder how you know the lady that used to be our landlord is like I didn't think like that I thought oh do you remember that time I went for that run yeah that was the first thing that went through my head and I'm a massive believer of going back to any area that I had a bad experience in and try and make it a nice memory for me now so like Templemore Park was one of those places for me where I tried to run and I failed miserably or I felt like like um especially from the background of um, endometriosis and PCOS, there was an awful lot of weight issues there that weren't my fault, but I didn't know that. I I had no idea about that in 2009 and 2010, that this was all hormones. This was not to do with food or diet because no amount of diet or working out was going to fix the issue. It was a full hormonal imbalance. And me running around Templemore absolutely hating my body hating that I couldn't run properly and now Templemore is a place that I go to for pure gratitude and calmness and I love it I love walking around the place I could run it and not even think about um that I struggled before so it's I'm a, I'm a massive believer of going back to those places where I was hurt where I was very mean to old Katie and I'm trying to heal um, by revisiting those places, but it definitely still affects me and I have to pull myself up on it, but I'm more self-aware. I I know when it's happening to me now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, Thank you so much for sharing that as well. Cause I'd, I like, I'd say a lot of people can probably relate to that. Mm. um, Yeah. I think that's such an important thing, like reparenting, yourself from a from a younger age or or healing any wounds that you know may be kind of there from from different things that have happened and mm. that was pretty much the exact reason why I went to over to Athens and Crete because I you know needed to essentially meet up with my my dad after only meeting him once 22 mm. years ago when I was seven so I had all these memories sitting there and all these feelings I'd sat there for so many years and then to to finally go back over as an adult and to be able to spend time with them and you know talk with them 
now I feel like that wound is kind of like it's been yeah. you know it's like it can heal now and I can move forward you know yeah exactly yeah yeah it has like a little bit of a a, a scab on it now and it, that will just heal yeah. itself like it's it's good it's it, all of these things are really important um my sister was clearing out our home house uh, it must have been about two weeks ago and she found some boxes that belonged to me and like I haven't lived at home since the age of I think 20 um and I went through some of the boxes and I actually found a Weight Watchers book and a copy book um and it was from June and July 2010 I would have been um I would say 20 21 no I would have been 19 so not even 20 and I'm going to Weight Watchers and nobody thought to stop and say oh I wonder is it the hormones or what is it but we'll just push you into Weight Watchers the feelings that came up when I found that copy book the other evening were horrific I had to go straight outside take a few deep breaths and say look it's okay we'll just put it straight into the bin <laughs> we'll forget it, that it even exists and we'll just continue and we'll say thanks for you know showing that to me or thanks for bringing that up I'm glad I'm after acknowledging it but I never want to see that ever again um and so yeah it's definitely important to revisit go back and acknowledge it and then let it self-heal mm -hmm. yeah and like Weight Watchers the whole, <laughs> the whole you could do a podcast on it on its own <laughs> yeah but the I think the worst thing about it really is just the the lack of empowerment that you get from it because for the the majority of women that I've worked with anyway their experience has been it's like the shame of the weigh-in day where it's like you have to go and see what your weight is and and they do it in slimmer world as well and it's mm -hmm. like the whole build-up to that what the mindset that that puts people in of you know yeah. it's like oh I need to starve myself <laughs> Or I need to, uh, you know, just drink water for the next few days or, you know, yeah. some people do, I think it can even encourage like really negative behavior, like bulimia or taking yeah. laxatives or, you know, doing like crazy things just to see another drop this week yeah. to say that yeah. you're, you were quote unquote successful just because you dropped a pound this week. Yeah. Plus and, you're doing it in a room in front of people, in front yeah. of other people. And that's horrific because they do the talk after the way. So if you want to stay for the talk or to listen what, to what they have to say, you have to weigh yourself in front of other people. And as a 19 year old girl, that is horrific. That is really traumatizing. Um, and yeah, it's just it's not it's not healthy. It's not it's toxic. No. And like what happened to all of the the other metrics that you can use, like mm -hmm. How is your your strength, your fitness, your energy, your mood, your mental health, your stress levels, you know, uh, you know, all these different subjective scores that you can measure or even objective things, you know, like, you know, how are you getting on with like push-ups or pull-ups or your lower body strength or your yeah. run, whatever, you know, there's so many positive things you can focus on and they have to choose the one thing that's yeah. most yeah. likely to cause body image disorders or you know that serious amount of shame that makes you feel worse about yourself and then in, yeah. go into like a negative spiral completely 100 percent. it's like that emotional trauma that they they just let it spiral but the one of the best things i i did for myself this year was um in may i signed up to a fitness class and it actually ended up being in the same room that I went to Weight Watchers in. So the same room that I was weighing myself in ended up being the same room that I lifted my very first barbell in and did weights and did a fitness class. Like it was just like I was there in the class going, oh my God, this is the same room. This is exactly where I sat and looked at myself and hated myself to now I'm lifting weights. Like look at the shift that's happened in the last 13, 14 years. Like like what what are the next few years going to bring and i hope that more women start to or more people start to walk away from those toxic environments and do things that they actually enjoy doing 
and that suit their body because what suits you doesn't necessarily suit me or the next person. You know, we're all different. We have to find things that we all enjoy doing and that are that, you know, will help us be healthy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool that you got to uh, essentially, you know, heal from from that. Yeah. Doing something yeah. positive, like working on your strength and um so those classes they're like full body workouts are there yeah yeah full body workouts and it was like once a week for like six weeks um but I'm a big believer that what you put out you tracked back in so like I was kind of it was the same place that I was going to swimming and it was upstairs in one of the the like workout rooms that's where the Weight Watchers classes were and I was like I wonder what happens up there now what kind of classes are up there and like two weeks later I saw the poster about a uh, women's fitness class starting at the end of May and I was like oh that must be upstairs in that room so I was like I'm going to join I'm going to make sure that I walk into that room a different person and more importantly that I walk out of it a different person as well um so yeah I'm a massive believer of what you put out you get back so I was obviously thinking about that room and trying to manifest like what exactly happens up in that room to then end up going to a class in in it and it you know it improved my health my fitness um but more importantly I got to see the room I got to heal it like how I was feeling about it and walk away and then it's a closed chapter I don't need to revisit it I've done it nice yeah that's really amazing and like it's so I think it's such an empowering thing as well like when you especially work on you know your strength and fitness and flexibility like just how positive that makes you feel about yourself uh like you don't have to be like the strongest person in the world you don't have to like lift 100 kilos on deadlift or anything like that it's just literally beginning the process of like yeah journey of developing your strength and fitness and all of the good feelings that come along with it is like feels so good yeah yeah exactly definitely as you say you don't have to be the fittest the strongest you don't have to be the fastest as long as you're doing it and that you're enjoying it um that's the most important thing yeah definitely that's like something that i really focus on a lot is like um just enjoying the process uh because the mistake i made years ago was like i'd set a goal and then I'd achieve a goal and then I'd feel miserable because like, oh, I was expecting this to be like some amazing moment that changed my life. <laughs> so yeah. I've realized like it's just about setting a goal, but achieving it doesn't really matter. It's just enjoying the process of working towards it because that could like for me, anyway, it gives me a purpose. And yeah, like just like uh, learning Spanish at the moment and getting a little bit better each day is like feels very rewarding you know but absolutely I don't really care if I'm going to be fluent or not you know exactly yeah it's all about the journey definitely I mean yeah. like yeah it's it's you know setting goals extremely motivating it's what I do I love it I always have some kind of goal um, or I'm working towards some kind of goal every week but if I achieve it doesn't really matter to me it's more that I've said it and that I'm working towards it um I just wanted to go back to uh, what you mentioned earlier about hitting the plateau like you said mm -hmm. you were in August of last year was it yeah so what would that be like 15 months ago yeah yeah like you got to that point where you're you felt like you were almost gonna quit or you were like mm -hmm. gonna maybe go back to your old mm -hmm. career <laughs> like yeah kind of uh when you think back in it it's like amazing how you can you can be in a moment like that and and almost give up mm -hmm. and when you look back it's like it's so amazing that you didn't because of all you know how much things have progressed you know the yeah. Year. yeah you're like, like so right and I think in a way deep down I never wanted to give up like I was doing interviews and I I was performing badly in the interviews and I was just like, <laughs> am I doing this on purpose that I'm not even aware that I'm, I'm performing bad in these interviews, like out of nearly a self-sabotage type thing. Um, and like I was getting declined by certain jobs that I thought, oh, like 
I could do that with my eyes closed and not in a cocky way, but like literally with my experience, I could do that job with my eyes closed. And as I said, like the next day or like two days later, two phone calls back to back to start working for people. Um, it was just mad, like it's crazy. And then when I look at it, that like how the agency has grown, um, how the business has grown overall, it's just, it's big. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. The reason why I wanted to come back to it is because I think like, it doesn't really matter what you do. Like if, you know, you're just starting off your journey with, you know, maybe you want to lose weight or get fitter or stronger, or, you know, it's your own business or it doesn't really matter what it is, but I think everybody at some point, you know, gets to that moment where it's like they're they're on a knife edge of like, okay, I can either quit right now or I can keep going. Mm-hmm. And that's like honestly for me for many years, I felt like that nearly every second day. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. Oh, maybe maybe today I like won't go to the gym or maybe today I'll I'll just like I'll quit and and look for a job and not be self-employed or there's constantly that self-doubt there and it's like for me anyway it was just a constant battle of like no 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 like I'm not I'm just not quitting today like maybe tomorrow but not today yeah yeah you kind of build up like a certain resilience after a while but it's um there's this like photo I always go back to and it's basically there's there's like there's two guys digging for diamonds and one guy is like an inch away from discovering them literally just has to like dig one inch deeper and he discovers all the diamonds yeah but he actually gives up and then there's another guy who's maybe a mile away and he's the one that keeps going but it's like usually when you feel like quitting you're you're literally like an inch away maybe from your next breakthrough and that's pretty much exactly what happened with you like you're literally yeah. like two hours away from those two new clients yeah Why not? yeah and imagine if i had just given up completely and shut the whole thing down but i think napoleon hill's book um think and grow rich starts like that as well where it's um i don't know is about gold or the opal industry and trying to to find the particular area of however they're mining I'm, I'm not telling the story great but that that particular book starts with a chapter very similar to that like being that few inches away from that diamond um but yeah it's definitely extremely important that like if you don't see an opportunity to definitely make make it your mission to find the opportunity and that's what I set out to do and I will never ever let myself feel the way I felt in August 22 mm-hmm. yeah that's really cool that book is uh it's probably one of the first that I read um uh when I finished my degree in like May 2016 I was like I never like read any books I need to like start reading or listen to books so I downloaded audible and that was I think the second or third book that I downloaded and I listened to it a couple of times but um mm-hmm. There's another really good one. Uh, it's not by Napoleon Hill. It's by, by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think that's what it is. Okay. But it's it's kind of similar to Think and Grow Rich. And yeah. Yeah. It's like those books like are honest. Like a lot of people say, oh, this book changed my life or it's life changing or like, but mm-hmm. these, like that book, Think and Grow Rich. And then the other one, How to Win Friends and Influence People, they're like, actual books that will change your life because they completely yeah. change how you kind of like see the world or you know kind of interact with with other people yeah I, I don't know the the second book there that you mentioned but um like and they're not new you know they're they're old like they were written years and years ago so it obviously works <laughs> you yeah. know that that mindset is has been there for years um but yeah it's it definitely is something that I go back to quite often um, to to remind myself, basically, to not let myself get out of hand. Yeah, I think uh, Think and Grow Rich was like written in like the 1920s or early 1930s. Mm-hmm. The same mm-hmm. way, How to Win Friends and Influence People is like 20s or 30s. Okay. Uh, that's where I think a lot of like self-help books from today like have original because they were the original yeah. kind of yeah. self-help books um the two books uh you mentioned earlier that you're currently reading are going between 
Uh, yeah, they're, they're more lighthearted now than well. Okay. They're they're um, the trap by um, Catherine Catherine um, Ryan Howard, and then um, everyone here is lying by Shari La Pena, and Shari La Pena is one of my favorite authors. She's in she was an English teacher um, based in New York, and she's written a lot of. Um, kind of crime, true crime or crime thrillers. Um, but they're just a way of me stepping away from the business and and kind of take my mind off of off business. Because even if I read self-help books or like the likes of The Power of Now or something, I still deem it as I'm working on myself or I'm working on the business. Whereas books like those two are kind of a a salt, like a, a way of me stepping away from the business and taking a break nice yeah i think the so the both of them are fiction yeah yeah it's, yeah yeah i think like everyone goes through different phases like you can only i know for me anyway there's only so many like self-help books that i can listen to for I'm like okay i think i need a break <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah Just, I, I can't do it anymore like i'll come back to it in a month or two yeah yeah, definitely. Um, but I listen to a lot as well. Um, I listen to a lot of Bob Proctor. Um, and yeah, I try and as I said, I try once a week to do something that helps me um, to be a better person, both personally and professionally. So I, I do a lot of self-care, which I never used to. I was always too busy. Yeah, too too busy, quote unquote. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. But yeah, whether it's reflexology or going to a mindfulness class or um, like I I pull a tarot card every morning before I sit down at my desk and I read it and I make sure that I fully understand it and, and appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I have lots of little practices that I do. And if I don't do them, then I kind of like freak. Oh, sugar, I missed pulling that card this morning like am I going to have a good day now or a bad day so yeah I'm a big believer of having that those um routines in place yeah that's amazing I think that's like um such an easy mindset to get caught in uh caught up in is like oh I'm too busy to focus on myself I'll wait until next next week next month next year whatever it's like mm -hmm. procrastination mindset is is causing self-sabotage but yeah. It's like what we talked about earlier. It's like, it's not that you're too busy. It's that you don't have simple things like your schedule, like maybe planned out efficiently enough. Or it's like, yeah, you, you feel like you're too busy because the actual issue is that you're actually too fatigued. You're too tired because you haven't got enough sleep. You know, your food has been off. So that's been affecting your energy levels. You're not drinking enough water, like uh, it's like a catch-22 it's like you feel like you're so busy that that you can't focus on yourself mm. but then if you don't have any self-care then you feel worse as a result you know? yeah so. yeah and like especially uh in the industry that I work in it's all about you know we're serving people we're helping people have be more organized have that better lifestyle have that better work-life balance and it's a case of it can be forgotten very easy to do for ourselves. And I, I was at a, a good networking event with, with other virtual assistants and online service providers about three weeks ago. And I was so shocked that everybody kind of had the same underlying issues where it was like, I have no time to do this. I don't have time to do that. Um, but it was a case of that, like they're willing to make it happen for the people that they're working for but not for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'm a massive believer that people don't get to eat into my personal time or that I put myself first because if I don't, then who will? Yeah, exactly. That's the 100% the right mindset to have. It's like you can't help anyone else if you don't help yourself. Yeah. And yeah. like, there's literally no reason why like we literally all have the same 24 hours in the day and i completely understand some people have three kids they work full time whatever it may be but it's like there's still ways you can prioritize yourself you know if it's like 
30 minute walk when you get home from 5 30 to 6 if it's like yeah. like on a saturday from two to four that's your self-care time where you do whatever go to the gym or get a massage or yeah. a reiki session or like you know and just yeah. have specific times every single week where even if it's just for 30 minutes three times a week that's still three times in a week where you're giving yourself the time you need to recover and feel less stressed mm -hmm. so yes yeah. i think it's more a case of priorities because if you prioritize certain things then you'll make it happen if you really wanted to exactly exactly it's all about wanting to and yeah it's about self-love and self-care at the end of the day that um as I said, if I'm not willing to do it for myself, somebody else is certainly not going to do it for me. So I have to carve that time out. Do you know? Nobody else is going to come here and say, Katie, you need that to carve out that 90 minutes. Um, it's just not going to happen unless I do it. So yeah, it's it's definitely important to to prioritize and to make sure that you're also a priority. Yeah, for sure. And that's like the main thing that I try to get across to to as many people as possible that I work with it's like yeah. just prioritize yourself and give yourself some self-care time and like you feel so much better and I always I take my own advice as well like that's why I have all my calendar blocked out and I have a lot of self-care yeah. to do and so yeah but uh, I think we can leave it there for today because we've been you know chatting for nearly an hour and yeah I'm sure we could talk about lots more things but um you know, it was really great to chat today and I'm sure we can, you know, have another one in the future at, at some point. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, really appreciate your time and thanks so much for sharing everything. And, um, you know, for anyone who's listening or watching on YouTube, uh, just drop a comment down below. Um, you know, if you've got any questions for either of us, let us know. And for anyone, you know, who wants to get in touch with you or who would maybe like to work with you, like what's the best way that they can get in contact? Um, I'm very active on my Instagram or LinkedIn. So it's KC and then underscore the virtual assistant, or they can always email me at um, Katie at katie-corbett.com. Um, yeah. So thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. Good stuff. Thank you so much. And I'll end the recording here and we can chat a bit after. And yeah, chat soon. Next one. Thank you.